Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. We're looking at the Rifter number eleven from Palladium Books. Now, this one, this one's a gonna gonna be a good one. There, there's there's a lot of not extra content, but more extra adjudication for the game master. You know, to to make it more pleasant for your players or more more approachable even. So let's take a look, and we will present arms. There it is. If you want to pay me. You can use PayPal. Actually, no, Actually that'll pay that, that is true. The PayPal <laughs> money goes to him. Oh, Twitch yeah, just dude. paid us, as a matter of fact. So I, I, I owe you like 50 bucks or something weird. Oh, I don't cool. know. But uh, yeah, he gets all the PayPal money. I get the, uh, I think I get the Ko-Fi money. Or does that go to PayPal too? I don't remember. <laughs> yeah, it goes to PayPal too, probably. All right. And then well, we know Streamlabs goes to PayPal. So all these, yep. why am I even showing these links? I have no idea. You just pay me money. I love it. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Let's start off. With uh, from the desk of Kevin Sambita. Okay, he he talks about uh, uh, new new things that have already happened. That the these these were slam dunk things that that he knew was going to happen, and they did. You know, but books that came out on time, which at this point in Palladium's history was very rare. But uh, he also he also talks about uh, um, his booth at Gen Con for uh, Gen Con 2000, and he uh, he, he talks about uh, how. Uh, uh, the uh, it talks about the the Rifter nine and a half again because people people are still wanting it. He had to do a, uh, I believe he had to do another print of it. Really? Because people wanted it. Uh, so you may have you know version two. I don't know my Rifters. Oh, okay. All of mine are behind the screen. I, I mean, this is one of the books that I actually got way back in the day when it came out because I liked it. Mine is uh, first printing April first two thousand. There you go. There it is. And then uh, Palladium News uh, talks about uh, one one of the one of the people who work for Palladium had a baby. They show a picture of the baby. I'm not going to do that because that's weird. So you know, <laughs> not doing that stuff. And then uh, stuff they're going to show at Gen Con 2000. Uh, the the booth number, all that stuff. You know where you can find them. All that all that good stuff. That was nice. And then Y2K the, the booth, man. Yeah. And then uh, the uh, coming attractions. Uh, Galaxy Guide, Gramercy Island, uh, Coalition Wars 2, you know, Siege on Tolkien, stuff that has happened. It came out and it was good. Well, Gramercy Island was meh, but, you know, everything else was good. <laughs> then we have the uh, Coalition Wars Siege on Tolkien series is described. This, uh, this goes in uh, and gi gives an overview of what the books are going to be about, how they're going to be set up, what's going to be in them. Again, I'd rather do the real book, <laughs> you know, stuff like that. So there is that. And then we get to uh, fantasy role playing is our middle name. Okay. Uh, Palladium Books' first big role playing release was the ever popular Palladium Fantasy, now in its second edition. If you like riffs and our other games, you'll love Palladium Fantasy. And we have all kinds of new source books coming out throughout the year. Basically, this is uh, riffs is the super runaway hit at this time. And Palladium Fantasy is, is losing. And they're like, hey, you know, we still have played in fantasy, man. It's it's still good. It, it, this this whole section has a kind of hint of uh, uh, desperation in it, so that's not great. Well, but it's year two thousand, right? Well, well hold, hold yeah. the timing of this. It's year two thousand. Yeah, so uh, yeah. A rift came out. No, no, it's not about rifts. Yeah, it's not about rifts. It's but, right uh, as Dungeons and Dragons third edition came out. There it is. Like, hey, yep. if you're if you're somebody who's mad about the Watsi, I'm sure he doesn't say this because Kevin oh, is yeah, no, 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 no. But hey, we're here. Yeah, I mean, if you want if you want to to have your old flavor of game, we got it. You know, it's different rules, sure, but hey, you're faced with different rules anyway, right? There it is. And plus, it it opens up all the other genres later on if you decide mm -hmm. to, which is a good deal. But my segment two is going to be on optional combat rules for rifts and other games. This is for uh, pretty much all played in games where it talks about optional rules uh, for uh, close range combat, range combat, far range combat, um, all, all oh. the stuff that. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it clarifies, but also gives you gives you options to make it easier, less crunchy. And uh, I understand uh 
for the for the range combat because range combat gets weird right it's target number four or less is a miss but if you go a little farther it's seven or less is a miss you go even further it's 11 or less is a miss called shots 13 or less is a miss or whatever you know like it, it that that is in the main rules these give you options to uh if you feel like your table is slowing down too much you can use some of these optional things to speed up the, well, uh, part, the part of that option stuff. is uh, back when I was doing the like you know a uh, name one rule you want to change or what was he like about playing books whatever when I was doing those uh, little polls, yep. uh, somebody just tore into Palladium about how horrible Palladium is because it doesn't have range categories and anybody who's fired firearms uh, you, this this game is just the exact antithesis of firearms this guy doesn't know anything about firearms and shooting guns and blah blah, blah you know anything like you know if somebody who's just, just railing on this well guess what if there are range categories in there screw you buddy <laughs> there it is then we move on to the Heroes Unlimited gives optional new powers. Many of these new powers ended up being in later editions of Powers books. Mm. So, you know, there, there wasn't any reason to, to go over these. I mean, the 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 only the only couple that I that I've seen that that were that I didn't see in in other books and that in this exact form is uh, Alter Physical Structure Sand and General General Regeneration. Like, you know, you regenerate this many hit points every melee round you know, I'm like that's cool okay it's it but it kind of it kind of messes with the vampire a little bit so maybe they didn't want to go that route exactly I mean if you look at the powers book one and powers book three they do give uh re regeneration type powers that do sub something similar but not nowhere near as fast so maybe they thought it was it was just too op so they didn't put it in the books but Every, everything else is either in another book or changed significantly and then in another book. Then we have the next one. Uh, let's see. Riff's Game Master Tips, Suggestions, and Good Advice. Uh, Hugh King, which I want to say his name. Hugh King. Where it's, is this? It's right here. Oh, oh I'm looking the wrong side. Okay. King. Yeah. Hugh King. King. Awesome, okay. name. awesome name. Love that name. Offers excellent observations, comments, tips, and suggestions on playing practitioners of magic. Uh, this is also uh, psionics in uh, in riffs and advice and advice is priceless and suitable for most any game. Uh, plus, the article is fun, insightful read. Sambita says, "Don't pass it up." Well, I'm going to pass it up today because not not, <laughs> not everyone not everyone likes the uh, the practitioners of magic. They they want to play a board, you know. So, so but it does give. What tips if it's for, what if it's those tips that make that, me go? You know what? I'm playing a psychic character now. No, I don't think that's going to work out. <laughs> okay, but uh, what what it what it gives is uh, e examples are um, uh, why would a low level practitioner of magic cast spells instead of shoot a gun? I mean, their low level spells do as much or less damage than a gun, and they can only cast four or five, and then they're out of PPE. They're going to have to go to the gun anyway. So why would a practitioner of magic use flame bolt then and not a, a rifle? Well, and it explains that. Well, they have studied years to do this. They really believe magic is better. You have to get into the mind of your character, stuff like that. So it, it talks about how to handle stuff like that. How uncivilized. How uncivilized, exactly, you know. Uh, and then uh, my third segment is going to be questions and answers because I, I, was, I was telling uh, Max about this earlier that uh, a lot of these questions seem to people who've played riffs for years like stupid questions but for people who are new or not as experienced these questions are something i had to figure out on my own and it took a, a amount of time i'm not going to tell you how much time to figure out on my own and you can just skip all that hardship and go right to the q a and you can get answers for it so i'm doing the, the segment three i'm doing is because of that for people who maybe have watched us but still not picked up a riffs book this will this will you know answer questions you have had or didn't know you had before they interrupt your good time and then we have the riffs lone star comic strip and we have uh nightbane this just talks about nightbane this is nothing specific it's just uh basically an advertisement for the nightbane system which i've done nightbane you know, on its own, you 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 could look in the in the YouTube history. Uh, I've I've done the Nightbane book, and uh, that that is that is enough of, of an advertisement because I I really like it. 
Uh, and then we have a Nightbane short story again, advertising Nightbane. And it's not Was a bad... Nightbane brand new at this point. Uh, not brand new, no, but it's <laughs> new ish. Then we have, let me zoom out a little bit. Um, Riffs t shirts. I should, you know what? I should show you because these are, these are cool. Uh, there we go. Riffs t shirts. Boom. The Dog Boy Brigade and the uh, General Death's Head type deal. So it's neat. I like it. I don't know if you can get them anymore. Probably not. This was. I think you can get ago. the. No, I think you can. Oh, good. Then we have uh, another. Uh, this one's a Palladium Fantasy Adventure. Obviously, I can't do adventures because it would ruin the adventure, right? So I can't do that. But uh, it is quite a long. Adve this is this is like a bot module. As you can see, it's almost thirty pages from page seventy nine to page one hundred seven. So this is an in-depth adventure. This is not a single day adventure. This is three to five game sessions. It's made for uh, characters between levels six and eight and for between four and six players. So it is involved and there's quite a lot of, of, of combat and there is quite a lot of, uh, of social situations for you to you know get, get uh, uh, information, stuff like that. So it is an involved adventure mini campaign i would call it so that, that it's it's nice it's nice i would recommend picking it up by the uh, way for the t-shirts the... you can get that riffs logo one you cannot get the dog way one on the, off the, the website. One? okay nope. all right and uh, then we have a continuation of hammer of the forge this is a story that's been going on since rifter two or three and what's notably absent from this rifter is the uh knights of the dinner table comic notably absent first time was the story over no i because i have i have several of the uh of the trade paperbacks and there's plenty plenty left and it, just, it was just absent from this one i don't know why maybe we'll ask kevin next time we see him but i don't know why did they quit just to go make their own product <laughs> or or they they had a they had a 10 you know book deal and they didn't re-up the deal i don't know I mean, I, I don't know the explanation, but it's notably absent the first time. Uh, so that that is this general book. I recommend getting it. If you play Palladium Fantasy 2nd Edition, I recommend getting it just for the adventure. Because this book costs as much as a normal uh, that that size module adventure would cost and you get all this extra stuff. So it, it, it's worth it just for that. Uh, if you are. Uh, what else we got here? Oh, the 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 game master tips for uh for practitioners of magic and and psionics. It it, it delves psionics in there. If if your group is magic and psionic heavy, this is a good deal to to get new players to understand how their characters would think after all these years of training. Your character would think that magic is great. Your character would think that psionics is awesome. This is what you and so you would default to that. It's kind of like um when when you when you go to catch something you you use your dominant hand just unconsciously you use your dominant hand to try and catch it well it's like that with magic and psionics you've trained so hard that when a situation arises you want to use magic or psionics to fix it because that's what you've done you've made that your dominant choice so it, it talks about that and i like it but that is uh the overview for the rifter number 11 and in the next uh, in the next segment, we are going to go over the optional combat rules. I think people are are going to be interested, at least in in uh, in hearing what uh, what the Rifter has to say about this, because you might agree, you might not, but even then, it will give you an idea on how you want to go. And then after that is going to be the questions and answers. That this one is mainly for new players. I thought it important enough to to read through it just because the this will this will either answer questions that you had in the back of your head or it will give you an answer to a question you didn't know you had yet because you haven't come across that situation yet so this is you know ammo for the future but yeah that's it uh what do we have for any chats I uh, made it just in time for my favorite segment oh awesome, awesome. The, the rifter is popular i like it uh, hmm, Borgs are lame. They can't even oh. 
field damage in the wilderness. Well, yeah, no, but I can't. That's I, why a Borg's best friend is an operator. An operator can heal a significant amount of MDC armor without a whole lot of supplies once, and then he's got to get supplies. But still, very useful. Very useful. But I also say that I come with mega damage, you don't, you pop. That's, he's got a point. <laughs> uh, what else we got? All right. And $5 super chat. Would the oh, CS you... turn animal slaves, I mean uplifted animals, into juicers? They actually, uh, in, in the juicer uprising, it touches on that a little bit, and it doesn't work. Uh, they, they've, they, they've tried the juicer conversion on several types of species. It works for humans, elves, uh, half-orcs, and ogres, I believe. I think I'm missing one, but I, I'm not sure. Ogre juicer? Yeah. But, but, their lifespans are diminished by the same uh, ratio. Whereas a human lifespan is is uh, is basically divided by twenty. So uh, on average, a human should live about a hundred years. Divide by twenty, a juicer is probably going to live around five. Elves live for say five hundred years, but they still divide by the same amount. So to an elf, you know, five years is an eye blink, but now they're only going to live twenty, right, or around that. An ogre or even a half ogre. Or, or a half orc or an ogre, they live like 30, 40 years. They, they're divided by the same amount. So they're like months and a couple of years of juicer life in them. So, you know, I don't know. Okie dokie. All right, then. That was the overview. Uh, what are you going to talk about in the next one? I know you already said it, but, you know, we, gotta, we have to make this last We're 20 seconds. About- <laughs> We're going to talk about optional combat rules for rifts and other Palladium games. Uh, this this is uh, for, for those of you who think the rules are a little weird or a little too crunchy. Maybe this will help you out.